Hi, everybody. Okay, let me just make sure this is set up the way. Okay, just give me a second. I'll also give a chance to everybody to kind of get in. And let me see, are you on there? Hi, Emma. So I'm pretty much all set. So um, it's supposed to kind of go live in less than a minute. And um, can we try to sh shut off that overhead light, John? Okay, so just give me a second, everybody. This is the first time I'm using this format. And actually, I think it's too dark now. Okay, so I think I'm gonna get started. Do you see these little arrows that I have with tape on the table so that I know where the camera view is? Okay, I'm gonna get started. So welcome everybody. Um, my name is Arona and I'm going to show you how to make these adorable little squeeze frames. And I'm gonna take you through the process of making the pattern and also um, sewing it up. And I just listed these on my website. So if you wanted to nap some, I'm selling them in sets of five. Um, and they're, um, they're really great. They're made out of metal and um, I'll show you how to use these too in a second. So um, we're also taking questions and John's here to help me monitor them. So if you have any questions, um, let me know and um, I can do my best to answer them. Um, you can, this is the back of the, the pouch itself. I put some paper in here just so that it gives it a little um, kind of puffiness, but that's what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so when you're creating the pattern for this, you can pretty much measure, um, this is four and a half inches wide. You can pretty much make it about um, the same width, but as you can see, there's a little bit of ruching on here. And so the dimensions that I kind of came up with was dependent on how much of, um, of this sort of ruffling here or ruching um, that is created. And then the height is just, you know, whatever height I thought was good to kind of carry things in. So there isn't really, um, you know, a specific way to kind of create um, a particular pattern. It's just sort of more trial and error of what you like it to look like. So if you don't want too much of this sort of wrinkling, then make your dimension pretty much the width of this and then just add your seam allowance. So what I wanted to do was, um, so you could see it's about four and a half inches so how you create your pattern is just take a piece of paper and just measure out um, how wide you want it to be. So I decided that the width um, six and a half was good because I have to add about three eighths on either side for the seam allowance and then plus about half an inch so that it has a little bit of a gather, okay? So how I created the pattern was I just sort of trace this ruler and then I also determined that I wanted it about five and a half inches high so one two three four five and before I do any product I always do a lot of prototypes so you know, in the beginning, I did have this a little bit shorter, but I wanted it a little bit longer so that it felt more of like a square-ish shape. And so if you want this shorter, you can just make it, you know, however high you want it to be. And then of course, if you're making like um, eyeglass cases, you can definitely make it longer. Or if you wanna um, 
make like a pencil holder. If you want to make it longer, that would be a really nice sort of thing just to put um, your pencils or if you're a knitter, any of your like um, uh, circular needles and things like that. So you might want it a bit longer. So that's that's where you kind of add the, um, the, uh, the bottom part. So um, as you can see also on the top band here, I could design this so that this is a little bit taller to um, make room for the, um, the squeeze frame and then it would be all like one fabric. But I sort of like the idea of the band um, being a place to um, you know, share different kinds of prints. And so what I did was I created another pattern, um, pretty much the same width. And um, I determined that I wanted it about um, two and a half inches. So the piece of fabric, if you take a piece of fabric or a piece of paper and you sort of fold it in half and then you place the squeeze frame in there and then add your seam allowance, you can see how much room you have. So that's how I kind of determined that the height of this was going to be um, two and a half inches. So I'll just measure that out. And if you guys want to, with the squeeze frame orders, do you think just like a PDF of this is good to kind of add with the order? And then you could print this out and then you would have basically the template. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you would want, just this sort of template. So this is the, um, the body of the bag, I mean the pouch, sorry. And then this is the top band. Okay, so this is essentially your two pattern pieces. And so once you've kind of figured it out and that's what you want for your um, template, um, I would take um, some cardboard and create a template. So this is just something, um, you know, like I'm just sort of recycling. You can use like a cereal box. That's the perfect um, cardboard density to, to make your pattern. And once you kind of created your templates, then you can go and um, cut your different pieces. So there's, there's the two pieces that I have for the um, top, as well as two um, lining pieces. And I'm gonna show you how I sew that up. And then you need two pieces. So that's for the back of the pouch. And then I have to create this part, which I will do in a second. And then as well, you need to cut two lining pieces. And this is just cotton muslin. And if you want it to be a little bit more colorful, you can choose like a colored fabric or any other sort of fabric that you have lying around. And I really like this project because it's really good for, you know, upcycling um, any remnants you have from your different projects. And it's just a great little um, useful pouch. So do we have any questions so far before we um, move on to um, starting to sew? about the pattern design or about the squeeze frame. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna start sewing and I'm gonna kind of um, create these um, little fabric corners. I really like doing these because um, they're a really nice way to kind of um, show different colors as well as the shape. Um, you can definitely try, uh, you know, different uh, patterns. Like this one here is just trying to use up all my little um, remnant bits. And this one here is following kind of, um, I think it's called like a log cabin. So you start with like a little square and then you start sewing around it and around it and it just keeps going around. So, and then there's the little sort of, um, butterflies that I'm going to show you that I'm going to be doing. Okay, just get myself organized here. So I think um, I'm going to start with this. So he wants you to repeat how you got the dimensions. Oh, okay. So somebody has a question on how I got the dimensions. So I was mentioning earlier that 
the dimensions that I came up with was based on how much this sort of, um, I don't know what this is the proper term, ruching, I'm, I'm thinking that's the proper term because it's um, how it wrinkles. So the, the frame itself is four and a half inches wide. So if I just add my seam allowance, and my seam allowance is three eighths of an inch, sometimes people use quarter of an inch, um, the seam allowance um, would make the pouch be completely flat. So if I were to do um, my seam allowance exactly similar size um, to the uh, squeeze frame, it would be flat like this, but I want it to have this sort of wrinkling effect. So I'm making it wider. So you could see from the squeeze frame sitting on top of my template, I'm, about, I'm adding about half an inch. And these dimensions are completely random. Like it's not like, um, you know, uh, a specific way. It's just your personal preference. So if you want this to even be more um, ruching or wrinkly, then you would even go wider. And also how wide you go determines on how much space you have inside here as well. Um, so that's just how I came up with that dimension. So I could um, go smaller, I can go bigger. It'll just change the way this looks. And then the height is also kind of random as well. Um, so the dimensions that I have, I'll repeat them again. So for this body, the dimension is five inches by six and a half. And then the top band is a similar width. And I'm gonna to talk to you about the top band in a second when I sew it. So this is also a similar width, and then the height of this is two and a half inches. So um, does that answer your question? I'll keep going. But if you want to um, have me include the pattern when you purchase the, the squeeze frame, I can provide that and it would come out looking similar to this in shape. And then if you, go and do that and you want it to be wider, then you just add a little bit more. Um, that's how it happens when you're creating patterns. It's very much about trial and error. And I always sort of do a prototype before I come to um, a final um, size or shape that I like. Okay, I'm gonna continue on with the sewing. So how I do the little um, butterflies, which is similar to the way I, um, I usually kind of start with like one color and then, then I, I trim off the corners. And when I do trim off the corners, I end up um, reusing those. I know they're itty bitty, but they still get used like in there. So I hang on to these. And then I always like to kind of use a color that is contrasting or something that's maybe even a little bit brighter like this one. And then I just sort of guess. I usually try to make that triangle a little bit bigger than that one. And then I place it on top like this. And I keep my seam allowances pretty small for these patch pieces. And then I go to my next color. I think this one's fine. And then what I do is I take sort of like a, a plain, a plain um, one and I just sew that beside it. And then I repeat the same thing, but on the opposite side. So I'm thinking about do this blue. And so what I do is, because I don't really know, I do everything so um, random. I don't, um, you know, have patterns and things like that for these things. I just, I find it more fun to just do things on whim. So what I do is before I cut this into a square, because I don't want to waste this fabric, I will just sew this on here first. 
So each of these sort of patchwork pieces, this is how I kind of do them. I do all the color bits first. And then, so that's gonna go there. And then the next one, maybe this purpley one. So then what I do as well, I don't cut this. So I'm gonna sew this on here. And the reason why I don't um, cut them first is that I'm trying to also um, eliminate having um, you know a lot of waste. And so now I'm going to sew these two bits together. Do you where you put the edges frame? No, no, because they're all um, going to be um, sewn inside. You're not going to see the the frayed edges. And I usually do um, about an eighth of an inch or so seam allowance. So usually I pin this part just so that um, they sit nicer together. But I mean, if they don't, if they don't line up, it's not a big deal. So I'm gonna sew that together. Okay, so. There, so that's sewn together, and then now what I do is I trim it. Okay, and then usually I press this, but I'm not going to yet. So I'm going to press them all at once before I, I sew it together. So here is my template. And what I usually do is I sort of I put them in the middle because as you can see with the pouch, it's sort of framed by the, the um, pattern. Or, you know, if you want to, you can put it to the side like this as well and it goes here. That's that's the fun part of doing these things is that you can kind of determine however you want it to be. And so a lot of the other fabric that I sew with it is my, um, my printed fabric. So these are all fabrics that I screen printed with my drawings. And um, so there's a little bit of a space here, so I'm just gonna find a piece that um, will fit. I think this one will fit good. And then at this point, I kind of flatten everything with my hand, and then I put this template over it just so that I know roughly how big it is so that when I add the side pieces, I'm not wasting any fabric. So I'm gonna trim that here. Trim this down. And then now I'm gonna choose my side pieces. So I'm gonna do this gray. So that's perfect there, it's the same height. piece here and a lot of the colors that I choose for my screen prints are pretty neutral because the hero of the piece is the patchwork the colorful patchwork and so that's what I want to focus on okay so now at this point I'm going to press this and then I'm going to um, do my final measurement. So just give me one second, I'm just gonna press this.
Okay, so I've pressed this all. And then now I'm gonna do Take the template and I mean I don't have to have this quite so I'm just sort of lowering this a bit just to see where it's at. Maybe I can have less of this rain pattern and more of this one where it could be right in the middle. Uh, let's just do it right in the middle. And then what I do is I hold the template on top and then I just trace around with a pencil. And then trim these pieces. So now I have that front panel of the piece. The great thing about sewing is that, you know, it's exact, but not 100% exact. So like little bits that are not perfect there, I don't really worry about it because when I sew it, it'll be stuck inside the same allowance. So when I'm doing production, I will, um, you know, make a bunch of panels. So you can see they all have that sort of similar kind of quality. So I'm using different colors, different patterns. And um, yeah, so I start with all of these first when I'm doing production. So these are just a little peek at some of the ones that will be available soon. And, I, and you can see they're, they haven't been trimmed yet. A lot of them are sort of um, like, they're all kind of sticking out and stuff. Any questions so far? I feel like I'm just zooming by and I just wanna make sure that if you have any questions that um, to ask. And I'm gonna have this live posted on my YouTube channel so you can look back at this as well if you're um, just watching it and um, that way you can kind of follow along. One of the things that you can do when you're doing your pattern, which um, you could see that this has a gusset. And so sometimes what I do is in the pattern, I'll add like little corners, right? So um, my gusset is three quarters of an inch. And that's why I didn't create these little corners because it's way too tiny to do that. So let's just say for an example, you wanna do um, a one inch gusset. So if you wanna do a one inch gusset, when you do your drawing on here, it's gotta be half of what, of what you're doing. So that when you go to sew this, this will end up being one inch. So half an inch. So you can add these little corners to your pattern and then it kind of helps you create the gusset a little bit better. But because mine is three quarters, it would just be so tiny, it's just not worth it. But this is just a little trick if you want to do that to your pattern. Okay, so I'm going to sew this together now. So I'm going to start by sewing all the pieces together. So I'm going to take, um, now that I see this, I don't like it when it's the same pattern, um, but different colors. I'm funny like that. Um, so maybe what I'll do is switch it to this one. And I don't normally patch the back of the piece because that would just be too much work. So the back is usually always just like a solid, um, solid print. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is take the fabric and the good sides facing each other. And I do a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna sew all the way around. Okay, and then now I'm gonna do the gusset. Okay. 
So I usually stick my finger in here and then I just open the seams. And to kind of get them in the right spot, I usually take my seam ripper and just stick them along the seam there. Sometimes people pin it down. So I don't know if you can see here, but yeah, so this, I have these tape here marked. So it's three quarters of an inch, so it's this line right here. Okay, so that's one gusset. So there's, there it is sewn. And then this front piece, I'm turning it good sides out. And there's the finished sewn bit. So that's one part. So the lining, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave an opening at the bottom about, how much is that? About three inches. I kind of just guess at it. I stop there, start over here. And then at this point, I'm going to put in my Buko label, kind of in the middle there. So there's the label. So now I'm going to do the gusset. right there, and that's where we're gonna pull everything out of. The reason why I chose the bottom, you can also do the side. Um, I don't know, I just like it when you look inside that it's sort of, you know, on the sides, it's kind of clean looking. So you could put this here if it's easier for you. Okay, so the next part is the top band. And I like my sumi print because, you know, when you when you look at it, it has like a really nice abstract feel. So every part of it is, is kind of interesting. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch on the sides here on both. So I stitch along the sides. And then I'm gonna turn this out like this. It's gonna look like this. And if you have a heavier fabric, you could just skip this and then make these a little bit longer and then just do like a, a little rolled hem like this. But I just like having, um, so if you have a thicker fabric like a canvas, you could do that and not do it this way. Um, and you would definitely have to make it wider in order to compensate for how much you're, you're sewing in. But the reason why I like doing it this way is that I just feel like it gives it a little bit more strength. And then also, um, I don't know, I just like the way it looks. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, oops, I did this wrong. Because I got distracted. Let me just take this off. So the next step after I do this is I press it. Okay, try 
try this again. So with the good sides facing each other. So what, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just press the sides here down. So I'm going to press this down. Give me one second. So if this sort of isn't even, I'm just going to trim that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach these two top bands to the front of the, um, in the front of this. So what I do first is I fold this because before, if you, if you just attach this, um, I mean you could pin it, but I'm going to sew it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this. But I'm only going to sew it just in the middle here. And when I sew it, I'm going to sew it right to the edge, like not to the seam line, because I don't want to see that. And so you could do it across the whole thing, but I just do it in the middle there. And the reason why I'm doing this um, is because when you fold this and you just go and attach it to here, sometimes things get moved and then that kind of comes undone. So I do this in order to keep all the four layers together without moving. Sometimes you do like little things that just kind of makes your job easier. See, this is what happens. It can come up, so I'm gonna just sew this down a bit more too. There, okay? So then what I do next is I'm gonna attach these to this and I'm going to put it pretty close to the seam and if you don't want it close to the seam then this pattern you're going to make it a little bit shorter if you want a gap. I don't really want a gap. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this close to the edge. You could pin this if you want. I find it easier just to kind of sew it on. I'm not a big pin person, as you can see when I'm sewing. I think it's because I was slightly traumatized from using pins. I was sewing once and I was using pins. And then I didn't take the pins out and I sewed it through. And then the pin broke the needle and the needle went flying. It almost hit me in the eye and I got really traumatized from having pins in my work, so I don't do pins anymore. It's funny when things like that happen and then you refuse to do it. Okay, so I'm sewing this really close to the edge. Um, Go far down. Oops, of course, I ran out of thread. No, I didn't run out of thread, I just got stuck. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So these little guys are attached here. Um, and then if you want to, just clean it up a little bit. Just a little freddies.
So now what you do is you take this piece and you stick it inside the lining. Like that. And then usually I kind of try to line up the seams. And then now when I sew this, I'm going to sew this all around the top and I'm going to go and do the seam allowance. And usually what I do is I sew like part way like this and then I stop and then I go back over here and I go to this side of the seam just so that my seams kind of match. And like if you do it your own way, that's fine. This is just how I do it. I just like to have my seams match. So now I've sewn it all the way around, as you can see, and I did it my three-eighths of an inch. Okay, so there it is. And then go inside that hole at the bottom, and then I just turn it all good sides out, like so. And then I'm just checking to make sure everything looks good. It does. So I'm going to close it. And just top stitch that opening close. And I'm just going to cut all my little bits. Okay, and then I'm going to stick this inside. Make sure you get the corners. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to top stitch that so that it kind of has like a nice kind of finished look. Let me see the seams match up. What I'm doing is, as I'm sewing, I'm pulling the lining back so that um, it doesn't come up when I'm doing the top stitching. And I'm getting very close to the top stitching, really close to the seam. And I'm doing it on the lower part, not the part at the um, So I'm doing the top stitching on the actual pouch part, not the top band. Okay, so that is what I end up having after I'm doing all my sewing. I have a whole bunch of these. And then as I'm, as I'm finishing, I go and I add the purse frames. So it comes apart like this, not purse frames, sorry, the squeeze frames. Um, they come apart like this and they're metal and then somebody messaged me on Instagram and said that she used a measuring tape which is very similar looking to this so that's that's a good idea if you have an old measuring tape you would definitely have to close these somehow because the measuring tapes you know you want to make sure that they're it's sort of stuck together so you'd have to figure that out um, you'd have to kind of sew it so that it wouldn't pop in so the little pins that will come with it look like this. I know it's hard to believe this is what holds it all together. So what I do is I um, slide it in like this and like this. So they go inside the little pockets there and then you just push it. And then you have to pull it down a bit because of all the wrinkling. I should do it the same time.
is the part that I always struggle with. Okay, so then once they come out on the other side, you kind of just close them up together and then pull the fabric back so that it's not pushing on it. So you can see that it, it opens up like that and then you're gonna just make sure that they line up together. And then you take this little pin and you stick it inside that little hole there. And then you take a pair of pliers and you see there's this little flap here. And you can see that the, the flap on the other side has been pushed down. And this side here is up. So you're gonna bend that a little bit and then just squeeze it down. And you don't wanna push too hard, just a little bit. See, just a little bit, just to make sure that pin doesn't fall out. And then you just pull the fabric, you know, make it all pretty. Push it to the sides. You know, fix your little ruching. And then put some paper in it so you can see the shape better. And there you have it. Isn't it adorable? And I think it's pretty easy to put together. So here's my little pouch collection. So let me know if you have any questions and then we'll just wrap it up. This is pretty much the tutorial. And like I said, on um, my web shop, I have some of these for sale and I'm selling them in sets of five. Um, and uh, you can make your own. No? No questions? Okay, that's it then. Thank you so much everybody for coming and watching the tutorial. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube, please do. I'm gonna do more of these tutorials. And um, yeah, and if you could just, uh, you know, leave a comment and say hi or anything in any of the uh, videos. Thanks again, everyone. Bye now.